Okay, welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in to Johnny's Motorized Bicycle. So, I don't know if I'll put this in here or not, but what I am going to put in here is how I'm making this stupid stand. I'm going to be honest, I'm procrastinating quite a bit, mainly because even after I build this stand, I still need the scissor jack. Either way, I still do have to make the balancing stand for the cranks. Yes, I'm doing it for the 50cc crank, but... I'm doing it as practice for that really. I'm really doing it for the 95cc or 98cc, whatever that other one turns out to be, which you know I'm not gonna figure out. I'm just gonna say it's a Frankenstein, which it is. So, all I have is wood to work with. So I need to put a bearing right here inside of this piece of wood so that the crank can go up against it and float freely inside a bearing but the crank has to go back. I colored in solid where the wood needs to stay. This is a piece of, um, I don't know, what is that, three by four? I found next to the VFW, it was underneath a bunch of like fire hydrants that they were gonna put in, and I guess they put them in already, and they moved a couple off. They had like three of these just sitting there. I thought they were just three by four like pine. When I picked it up, I'm like, man, this thing's heavy, it must be wet. When I got it home and cut it open, it is 100% oak. So that's why it's heavy. Don't mind the hole. I just drilled it out. Before this gets chipped away, I wanted to have a nice chunk of wood to drill the hole all the way through for the crankshaft to go all the way in. This way, when I chip away all this, I don't have to drill through a weaker piece of wood. Okay, so all this colored spot will basically be here, here, and then around in like a circle motion will be tapered because remember, it has to, the, the bearings when they sit on here sit like that okay so they only stick out a little bit but the front of the bearing over here this part of the bearing is going to be here so that means the crank face is going to be here too well there's a recess of about three millimeters from from the inside of the crank here to here so basically the crank has to be able to go over top of the piece of wood and like hug it like it is in your crankcase, you know, it's got to look kind of like that. I didn't have any wood chisels and I have no other way to take the wood out of here. So I took an old coal chisel. It's obviously way smaller than it should be, but this will work for what I want to do. I took the coal, you can see how it used to be a coal chisel, but I basically ground it all the way down. So the flat spot is there. So it is a little bit of an angle. You see how it's angled? It's not flat like a regular chisel would be. That's okay. So I'm gonna basically knock, see this mark? So I got it all marked off. This whole chunk here is gonna come off to about here. Same on this side, all the way down this whole side. And then I'm gonna work this in with the chisel real good. And I'm gonna get like it a nice rounded spot so that it is clearance enough for the crank. Is this gonna work? I don't know. Giving you guys a bird's eye of what I'm doing. See, I already broke off one layer. I'm just cutting the edge where I cut the line. I gotta go all the way around. You gotta hit it pretty good and gotta go in deep. This is oak. Okay, welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in. I don't know when I'll put this in, but, so I'm still working on the balancing stand because basically I just took two months off, give or take about a month or more. So I gotta make this balancing stand. Okay, first of all, I don't have to make it. I'm choosing to make it because I'm an idiot. I'm also choosing to make it out of probably the worst possible way you could do this. Right? Probably. Anyway, who cares, right? None of you do. I don't either. Right. So, because in my infinite wisdom of being a complete idiot, I drilled a hole. As you can see, the hole is slightly off kilter. Well, everything else I made is slightly on kilter, so the hole is now off kilter. The problem I'm having is this, well it's not really a problem I'm having, it's a problem I'm about to have when I do this. It's oak, which is great. It's a phenomenal good wood, super super strong and all that other crap. So this is going to be good. It's not like this goes through a lot of stress, you know, or anything like that. So I basically mitered it out so I could fit the bearing in here. The bearing fits in here loosely. Why does it fit in here loosely? Because I might even have to take it out more. I'm not 100% sure yet. When it's about level in the center of that, you know, the center of the actual stand, you could see that the hole I drilled is way off. That is about centered, and that's where the hole is. So, I'm gonna hang up. So, I don't know if you can... Hi, can you see me through there? Yeah, that's me. So, 
I need to drill that hole kind of like oblong. Problem is, is I don't have a drill bit that big, which ain't really a problem. I can go get a drill bit, not really a big deal. Uh, I also thought about boring it out with like my part by bit, but I really don't want to dull my bit. Believe it or not, the wood will dull it because it just burns and it gets really hot. The problem still persists that I need this hole to be about over here. Uh, also, something I've noticed is the bearing. I need this part of the bearing in a race. I need that to be free floating so that the bearing spins super easily so that when I you know, put, I'm gonna use a light, light oil on it. Maybe I'll just use straight two stroke or just WD-40, something like, I need something very super light viscosity so that it doesn't interfere with the bearing moving at all because the whole idea behind uh, the balancing crank is you want this to be able to move easily. How do I make a hole over here in extremely hard wood? Well, the only thing I could come up with is I took a not so hard piece of wood, piece of pine, and I got a paddle bit and I drilled out the pine, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line, I'm gonna find the center on this where I want it to be. And I'm going to put this over top of it and then screw it to the piece of wood. And this should work because once I start getting half of this bit into the oak, then the oak itself is gonna hold where I want the bit to go. So that's where we're at, that's what we're doing. But for the most part, as you can see, this is looking good. Let me get this started and I'll tune back in and let you know how it comes out. More than likely, it's gonna come out great. It's probably gonna be all screwed up now to start over. Luckily, I have two more big chunks of pieces of wood over there, sitting there, waiting for me to decide what I'm gonna do with them. Either they're garbage or they turn into a stand, which I'm hoping I don't have to do because this actually took a really long time to do. Okay guys, so I have it where I think the center and all that is. And I got it screwed in with two screws on the back. Okay, so I drilled it through. It went perfectly in line with what I put on there. So let's turn it over and see how she looks. Doesn't look any better than me, to be honest. I think I drilled the hole that he wanted us to begin with. I definitely drilled it cockeyed. It's way... Actually, I speak too soon. No, I don't. I think it needs to be moved over still. Yeah, I gotta move it over more. Do over. I just wanna show you really quick how I did and what I did here. So, I need to get the bearings to stay inside the bore that I carved out. The only way I could keep them centered because I made the bore bigger so I could, because I couldn't get an exact size by hand. It's just too hard to make a circle by hand with the equipment that I have. So what I did is I made it slightly bigger all the way around. It's oblonged, like oval, whatever. It's just not a perfect circle, but that's okay. So I put a bolt through it with washers on both sides so it could hold and clamp it. I covered the bearing in non-stick tin foil. I put a quick JB Weld, like fast drying JB Weld. So hopefully the non-stick tin foil is enough. No matter what, I can chip away at the edge or grind it away with my little uh, rotary tool just so it slips out. No matter what, it should slip out because no matter what, once I peel back the edge here on the tin foil, the bearing, the bearing is not touching any epoxy. So no matter what, it will slip out of the tin foil. Now I might have to go back in and put something in the backing, but I really don't think I'm gonna have to. I did both of them, so I just gotta let this set up and dry, and once it's dry, we can take it apart and we can continue going on making the rest of the stand. Now, since it's bolted in with these bolts, because I didn't, I, man, it took me forever to figure out how I was gonna center these in the bore and hold them still while I spread epoxy in there with my mini spatula. I came up with this and I can't believe it took me so long to figure it out because this is one of the things that was really holding me up on thinking how can I do this without getting everything all messed up. A bolt right through it was so simple and I feel stupid for it taking me like two months to figure out, but whatever, that's what it is. <laughs> you know, you live and learn. So I want to measure and cut out the bottoms for my slides. These are just door handles for a drawer like this. They just go on like, if this was a drawer, it just goes like this. That's all it is. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to, on the bottom, just etch out as the top, obviously, but on the bottom, I'm gonna just carve out the space, but I also gotta flatten these down because the, uh, the main shaft that screws into is 
thinner than the actual handle part so this all has to be super flat and the reason I got these is because once they're tightened down and this is in there it can't turn this way or go back and forth so that's the main I didn't want it to go this way or be able to spin like this so it could just come on and off easily I figured it was a super simple way to fix what I got going on so all right I'm probably gonna let this harden up though for a little bit before I really get involved with this and I might start on the, the other stand for the press okay real quick I'm just gonna show you what I did is I shaved down the sides because this bar was bigger than this shaft and I needed it all to be the same size as this because I can't make the top I mean I can make the bottom you know beveled out so as it slides up this is fatter but you can't make the top fatter to be able to pull it out so it all has to be the same size and the reason I went with these is because I want this to stay here. This is gonna sit bolted to this, right? Okay, we're gonna have it bolted to this. And then this, which is gonna hold the crank, is gonna just slide over this. And it's just gonna sit on here. And this is what's gonna, once it's bolted, this here is what's gonna keep this from falling over or going like this once the crank is in there. But I don't wanna have to, you know, bolt it on and off on the bottom or something with bolts. Because you know how many times you're going to take this off? Well, I don't know how many times. Maybe you do, but I really don't know how many times. But I'm assuming it's going to be a lot to drill, weigh, drill, weigh, drill, weigh, drill, weigh, all that nonsense. And I want to be able to just do it quick and easily. So this is what I came up with. So this will go up in here. I'm going to, I'm going to chew out the area in there with the wood. I'm just going to chew it out with the, my little chewer wooder thingy. And that's official terminology, so you know. Uh, and then this is going to be flush with that and it's going to sit on here flush and that will keep it from going like this or from spinning and we'll just hold the crank up on there so I can spin the crank nice and easy. So I to showed you how I did this. Now I only did this, I don't even know if it's an hour ago, so I'm definitely rushing it. You shouldn't do it like this, but what can I say? I can't help myself. I'm an idiot. So I already ground off the uh, JB Weld. It's a little bit gooey still. Not gooey, but it's like soft. Like I can still make a dent with my nail. I hate the fast... JB Weld, it never comes out 100% right in my book, but maybe it's just the way I'm mixing it, you know, one one to one, but who knows, I could be doing it completely wrong. This one, I'm going to do the same thing, but I wanted to show you the before and after, so I didn't take the bolt out yet, I'm going to leave that in there until it hardens a little more. There is a bevel in the back, I'll show you more when I finish it, there's a bevel behind the bearing so that the bearing does not uh, have anything against the center part. So the crank can spin freely, but then the outer case should stay um, still. But it doesn't matter. If, any, if everything moves, I don't care. As long as these are the, stay the same distance apart, which they should. And as you can see, when it's on level ground, those bolts match up real good. So as long as they stay on level ground and whatnot, and there's no binding in the bearings, which I clean these bearings out super good. These are going to be the bearings for the balance stand. Uh, it should spin perfectly free and I should be able to balance the cranks very well. Now the only problem with that is I still need to true them. They go together here in the crank. One spot, and you can see it's completely bare everywhere else, okay? Nothing else here. Only spot is here. This pin goes through both sides and holds these two halves on. So you could either push this half off or you could push this half or push the pin off and leave just the halves themselves. It doesn't really matter what you want to do. What it does do, when they put them together, they got, because they're on one point here, this one is spun slightly more than this one, say. So when it rolls, it has like the slightest, as it rolls like this, it also does this just ever so slightly, like just a little bit. But that will make a wobble. So I'm going to separate it to try to take that out so that when I put it back together, I can put it back together correctly, or so we hope. Okay, I just really quickly took the bolt out. Now it's like this, I had it like that, and then I turned it over, and it fell right out. Perfect! Figured I'd share that with you. Okay, so, still gotta trim off the edge over here, but I don't know if you guys can see this, I hope so. spot it won't turn is when I have it top dead I mean but if I put just a little bit of pressure out it's 
spins right over, which is because this is not a balanced crank, obviously. But it does it, so that's great. Now I could have probably made something a little simpler, just take it two old halves and whatever, but I thought this was just a cool little idea. So I don't know guys, that seems like this is gonna work just fine for me. And like, yeah, it's in there, but when you need to, you know, you're gonna take it out to drill it, you just pick it up. That's how I designed it. I figured I wanted to be able to, in case I gotta take it apart, boom. And then also, so the way I'm looking at it is I could take, put this all together, uh, put it like this, boom. Like it is a Velcro. Look, I got myself a nice, neat little crank stand. At least it's about the size of a 4x4. It's not a stand that's up in the air all the time. You know? So I think it, it works great. Honestly, this is one of the things that was slowing me down a lot because I just did not want to do it. Plus, it's extremely messy with the wood, but I really need to get this 50cc done, so I've been procrastinating for about three months for me. All I gotta do now is cut off this end here. Doesn't look so weird. And I'm done. It's 100% good to go. Okay, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today is Johnny's Motorized Bikes Science Channel. No, what we're gonna do is, I don't know how much I'm gonna record because this isn't really normal footage for me, but what I want to do is cut down this I-beam and I can't do it inside the house because it's just too messy. But we got the big I-beam, got my cutter. I can't find my stupid handle, I don't know where it went. But we gotta turn it into a press with the jack. So, bring you guys along for the ride. I'm thinking what I should do first is cut it off here so I have less metal to play with. And I think from there I should be okay. I'm gonna cut just above this. Plus it'll make it easier for me to cut this off. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut just above this. See? Good. over and then bend this over top and I'll bolt them together and that'll be what I press against. But I do gotta etch out like a little piece for the actual crank pin to sit. I'm not sure where, what side, but my biggest issue is trying to bend this because as you know, I'm sure, this is an I-beam, be it a small gauge I-beam, it's still an I-beam and it's quite hard to bend. So I got it quite a bit so far, but now I'm kinda out of what I can do options so the only other thing I can think of let's see if I can do it like this we're gonna find out right now I do it like this guys what if I put 
this part on the pole. This will be able to, I'll be able to push my foot on there then. That is a much better idea, huh? I agree, that is definitely a much better idea. Good, thanks for coming in, guys. Uh, no matter what, we gotta go like this, though, so this is more level-ish. Let's go here towards the end. Oh, yeah, now that we're right there. Oh, look, we got just enough, too. <laughs> Look at that, guys. We got the bend. Just perfect, though. Okay, now this bend is going to be easier. I got I to gotta cut. What I, what I did, I'll actually show you. Okay, so you see the line that goes in there? So I'm, I scribe it uh, maybe a, eight, a third of the way through. But then I come back and I grind this way on the grain. Because I'm not, I've done it before, and I'm not 100% sure if that's why. But if you just scribe your lines... Are going this way then because of the way the you know disc cuts and if I bend this it could tear the metal so I grind this way to make the lines go this way so it has to stretch I don't know if that makes sense to you but I'll demonstrate exactly what I'm doing well, that looks good guys I'm not gonna lie shape of it see how it's like completely beveled now now it's still more than half the thickness of the metal there it's just an indentation really make sure you can see it uh, but by having that there like that it will, let, it will make it bend exactly there again so I got to take us over the stairs and get the first bend really get it lined up on that line so it bends it right that must be it right there. Let's see. It's pretty perfect. Now all I do is lift up. Hopefully. And just bend it. There you go. Look. Right on the crease. Okay. Let's see if we can bend it a little more by dropping it. Ah. Good deal. We're getting it. Okay, but we're doing good, guys. We're doing good. On this side here. We'll put the jack up in there. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you sticking it out and watching the whole video. Uh, as always, if you could, please hit the like button. If you could hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification. Could most of all and important to me is drop me a line in the comments. I really like when you guys all just you know drop me a line and chit chat and talk to me. That's the favorite part of this whole community thing we got going on. Uh, to keep the conversation going, you can go over to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles Facebook group. There is a link to that along with the TikToks and everything down in the description below the video right here. If you want, there's also the address there. There is an email address. Everything that's pretty much associated with me is down in the description. So if you need anything, just go down there. But uh, please, we're so close to that 1,000 subscribers. If you could just hit the subscribe button, it would really mean the world to me. I got a lot going on right now. You can see that I am not in my normal surroundings because there's just so much going on. So a lot of big changes, a lot of much needed change and welcomed. So if you could continue the stressful joy, does that make sense? Sure, why not? Keep the stressful joy going in my life by hitting the subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. Don't forget, drop me a line. That's what's important for me. Also, the rest of the video to do with this press, it is gone. I lost a bunch of videos with the sound. For some reason, I got the video, but no sound, and I, I can't 
get it to play, it won't play, I don't really know what's going on. So the rest of this uh, press, it will be an upcoming video. I've used it like three times and it's working very well. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. So if you could, uh, just bear with me until I get those videos out and you can see the finished product. I did have a big gap in between making the balancing stand and the press. There was about two or three months in between there um, because I had a bunch of other bike things come up that I was working on and I just didn't have to finish. Plus, the biggest thing is I was trying to get my hands on a factory car scissor jack from a junkyard. I did and I got it. Uh, that's why I went and finished because I needed it to measure everything to do the finished product for the press. So it worked great and you'll see it soon, but that's why the video just stops right here. I lost a bunch of videos. I looked through all my memory cards. I can't find them. I, I don't really know what happened to be honest with you. So it just is what it is. But I appreciate you guys watching and we're so close to a thousand. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. As always guys, I really appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.